Hello everyone. Are you feeling stuck or unsatisfied with your progress in life? What if transforming your reality could be as simple as adjusting your outlook? Welcome to Audiobook 101, where we dive into compelling reads and bring their essence directly to you. Today, we're exploring Attitude is Everything by Jeff Keller, a book that promises to elevate your mindset and actions. This summary isn't just an overview, it's a gateway to life-changing insights. You'll discover the power of positive thinking and the importance of Embracing Failures, Essential Steps Toward Achieving Your Dreams. And the best part? You gain all these insights without flipping through a single page. Stay with us till the end to learn how minor adjustments in your words and thoughts can open up new possibilities. Are you ready to shift from seeing the glass half empty to half full? Let's unlock the secrets to a fulfilling and successful life together. If you're tired of feeling stuck and unsure where to start, this book is your guide. It's crucial for anyone mired in negativity, providing strategies to cultivate a positive outlook and seize opportunities for growth. Learn how to use your thoughts to shape your reality. Discover the art of choosing the right words and understand the power of taking action. Are you ready to dive into a world of knowledge that will help you grow and reach new heights of success? Let's get started. Part 1. Success begins in the mind. Your attitude is your window to the world. Attitude is the lens through which you view the world. Two people can experience the exact same thing at the same time, yet feel differently about it. This all depends on their attitudes. When we were children, we began life with a clean and positive attitude. We believed that no matter how many times we fell, we could still run, walk, and ride a bicycle. We never blamed the world for our failures. As we grew up, our parents, friends, and teachers started pointing out many flaws and faults in us. This began to cloud our thinking like a fog, muddying our perspective so we could no longer see the world with the innocence of childhood. This positivity becomes obscured by our past experiences. External factors or other people can motivate you for a while, but sustaining it for the long term must come from within. You might think you don't have the power to change your attitude, right? But you're mistaken because history has proven that those who have tried before you have succeeded in this. Let's hear a story that will prove changing your attitude is entirely possible for everyone. Viktor Frankl was a prisoner in a Nazi death camp. He experienced hunger and cold intimately every day. He endured countless sufferings due to the dehumanizing experiences there. His entire family had either died in the camps or in gas chambers, which multiplied his grief manifold. His life had become synonymous with sorrow. If you think carefully, there was nothing in his life that could give him hope or reason to live. He was living in a real-life hell. Anyone else in his place might have lost all hope, but he never gave up. He believed that our attitude defines everything. He believed that even if everything else was forcibly taken from him, he could still survive comfortably if he retained one thing, the power to choose. The power of choice is our attitude. Despite being imprisoned, he learned from everything. The most important lesson he learned was that it doesn't matter what your situation is, what matters more is how you view it. Being in prison is not easy. Prisoners are treated very harshly. Victor carefully observed how this harsh treatment affected other prisoners. These conditions changed everyone, but Victor didn't let it affect him. He believed that lack of food, sleep, physical, or mental health does not decide who we are or what we will become in the future. The only way to survive 
like a successful person, is to adopt a positive attitude. Just because you are imprisoned does not mean you are a criminal. As long as you maintain a positive mindset, you are truly free. In death camps, where humans were treated worse than animals, shaking one to the core, Victor not only survived but emerged stronger than before. He became a renowned figure in the field of psychology and established a unique identity. His best-selling book, Man's Search for Meaning, reflects his knowledge and profound understanding. You are a human magnet. Like many others, you might have often wondered why only a few people achieve success while others do not. The answer is simple. We are what we think we are. This means that we become exactly what we think about ourselves. If you continuously think about a goal that you truly want to achieve, all your energy becomes focused on that goal. You will naturally start taking actions to achieve it because your attitude has already set you up for success. When we strongly believe in something, we begin to attract it towards ourselves. When we truly believe that we can achieve anything, and this thought embeds itself in our brain, we indeed end up achieving it. If your goal is to cultivate a positive attitude, then you must think about it not just for a few seconds, but throughout the day. The author of this book, Jeff Keller, shared his story of how he became a real estate owner. His dream began when he saw people in his city investing in properties one after the other and earning manifold returns. Yes, real estate owners face many difficulties, but they also earn significant profits. Jeff wanted to be one of them. This dream was constantly on his mind. However, he couldn't make the first move because he was afraid of failing. He thought about every possible obstacle. He pondered over problems dealing with tenants, rent issues, and numerous other problems. He was thinking about his goal with a negative attitude, but once Jeff started reading books about the power of attitude, his mindset changed. In 1986, he decided that he would invest in two properties that year. He was no longer afraid. He was moving toward his dream with a positive attitude. For six months, he repeatedly thought about buying two houses that year. Every evening, he met with real estate agents to look for houses. He did not rush. He moved forward with patience and took action to make his dream come true. And as he desired, before the year ended, he had bought two properties. This would not have been possible if his attitude had not changed. By changing his perspective of thinking, today he is a successful real estate owner. He indeed made his dream come true. Picture your way to success. To achieve your goals, you must have a clear picture of your destination in mind. Many famous singers and athletes say that they have been imagining their success since childhood. These images running through our brains create a movie which can reveal a lot about our past. Only you can control the mental images you create. No one else can. As children, our brains had no mental background clutter. We were extremely positive and believed we could do anything, as if the whole world was ours and nothing could stop us. As we grow older, our experiences often cloud our belief in ourselves like a fog. Whenever we try something new, we recall past failures and end up not even trying. Repeated failures fill our mental capacity with negativity. You are responsible for these outcomes. If you have created a negative image, only you can turn it into a positive one. So relax and create a new positive image of your story. Involve all your senses in this visualization to truly feel it from within. Robert is a great example of this. He was nominated for a judge's position. From childhood, his dream was to become a successful judge. 
When he was nominated, he felt both happy and incredibly nervous. And he noticed he was becoming more nervous by the day. Robert was truly qualified for this post, having the ability and a high chance of winning the election. Because Jeff was his friend, he gave Robert a life-changing piece of advice. Jeff suggested that Robert should add judge to his signature, making him Judge Robert Jones and place this signature where it would always catch his eye. Therefore, Robert signed a piece of paper and kept it in his wallet. His own signature constantly reminded him of his dream, even though he was not fully aware that this mental image was preparing him to be a judge. This led to even stronger images forming in his brain. He became convinced that he really was a judge. Now, to turn this image into reality, he began to take action. He vigorously engaged in his campaign and pushed his party to perform their best to maximize his votes. Robert was already a strong personality with a high chance of winning, but these images made him even stronger. Once these images transformed into a positive attitude, nothing could stop you from creating whatever you want in life. Make a commitment and you will move mountains. Achieving any goal is impossible without commitment. It is the most crucial part of our achievements. True commitment means having the desire to do whatever it takes to reach your goal. This commitment is nothing short of magical. When you start focusing on your dream, you will notice that new paths to reach that dream begin to open up. These paths were always there, but when you start committing to something, you begin to attract it. However, commitment alone is not everything. Life will test you by placing many obstacles in your path. You must maintain patience and an unyielding attitude. Commitment is not just about taking action. It is also about standing firm no matter how long it takes. In 1999, Jerry Gladstone started his company loving the idea of selling toys. A year later, he decided to focus solely on selling animation art. Jerry was selling animation art from various studios, but was not satisfied with the results of his company. He knew that if he wanted significant success, he would need to focus on selling Disney art. Therefore, he contacted Disney, but they rejected his offer. Jerry did not give up. He continued to offer Disney a partnership for three years. One day, a Disney team member became so annoyed by his constant phone calls that he left a voicemail saying Jerry would never get a deal with Disney. What do you think? Did Jerry give up? Absolutely not. He started calling even more frequently. Disney's people became so exasperated by his persistence that they finally offered him a deal. However, there was one condition. Jerry could only sell Disney art if he opened a store in Minnesota or Massachusetts. Jerry lived in New York and loved his city dearly. Reluctantly, the very next day, he set off for Boston, Massachusetts. He found a location there and called Disney again. When the team saw his commitment, they were impressed and invited him to join the Disney program. A year later, he was permitted to open a store in New York as well, and ten years later, Jerry became one of the world's largest sellers of animation art. Part 2. Watch Your Words. Your words blaze a trail. You might wonder why discussing the selection of words or phrases is so crucial. You should know that your words can either make or break your future. Words strengthen your attitude. If your words are positive, your attitude will undoubtedly be positive as well. Therefore, we must choose our words carefully. This process begins with a thought. Then it becomes a word, followed by belief, action, and finally, the result is right before us. 
Once you create a positive image in your brain, start using positive language to help guide you towards your goal. You can share your dream with others, but you must be cautious. Share your positive thoughts only with those who are themselves very positive. Such people have the power to help you advance further. They can even stand by you when you need to be accountable. The story of Kent Calhoun is very inspiring. Kent was a scientist at NASA and the leader of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Project. Kent had earned a doctoral degree in physics. He was trying to develop software that could detect other living beings in the universe. The thought alone seemed nearly impossible. Yet, he was working hard to achieve his goal. The problem wasn't just that the idea was incredibly challenging, but also that his physical condition was hindering his progress. However, he considered his problem to be small and trivial. He believed that his body did not hinder his work at all. You would be surprised to learn that the small problem Kent referred to was his blindness. Kent was blind. He knew that if he used strong and negative words, he would give more power to his problem, which would then control his entire life. Therefore, he decided to carefully choose his words. By controlling his words, he was managing the power of his blindness. Kent loved his work at NASA. Despite being blind, he successfully earned a doctoral degree in physics. This was no small feat. For someone with such determination, succeeding in the NASA project was not impossible. Imagine if you start considering even the biggest problems as minor. Think about the power you would possess. If you don't allow problems to disrupt your success, think about how much your life would change. How are you? How often do you hear the question, how are you, each day? Probably quite often. We often overlook the importance of this question because we've answered it so many times that it has become a habit. But are you aware of the effect it can have on you? Probably not. Answering this question frequently is almost like talking to yourself, which helps direct your day. So ask yourself now, how are you? Your response could be positive, negative, or somewhere in between. It's best if your response leans towards the positive side. Even if you're not feeling well, just saying you're fine can actually start making you feel better. This story is a perfect example. Sally often felt very tired. Whenever someone in the office asked her, How are you? She always told the truth that she was feeling very tired. Doing this reinforced her belief that she truly was tired. As the day progressed with this attitude, she would feel increasingly tired. It might even happen that she would start nodding off at her desk and potentially fall off her chair. Now, think about the person in the office who asked her how she was. Do you think hearing Sally's tired response made him feel positive? No. Hearing such a weary answer probably made him feel tired as well. By responding this way, Sally was not only diminishing her own energy, but also the energy of those around her. When Sally got home, she felt very weak and tired. She sat down in her favorite chair to relax and started checking her lottery ticket. She was astonished to find out that she had won $10 million. Remember how tired Sally was, but now she was also very happy. She started dancing around and began calling her friends and family to share the good news. She probably didn't sleep all night because of the excitement. So where did Sally find the energy to celebrate despite her fatigue? The secret lies in her mental state. When she kept telling everyone she was tired, she focused all day on that energy which only made things worse. If she had focused her energy on something positive, her entire day would have been filled with energy and turned out amazing. Remember, whatever you say or think, your body is listening, so choose your words and thoughts wisely. 
Part 3. Heaven Helps Those Who Act. Associate with Positive People. In the world, there are two types of people, those filled with negativity and toxicity, and those brimming with positivity who nurture others. The latter are the kind who constantly encourage you to push forward. These individuals always remain positive and believe that you can achieve your goals. You should strive to surround yourself with such positive people. On the other hand, toxic individuals always think negatively and are prone to complaining. They drain your positive energy and spoil your mood. It's best to avoid the company of such people. Consider Smokey, a good friend who worked in the sales department of a funeral home ministry for 45 years. When we hear about funerals or memorial services, we might assume that being surrounded by death might make someone negative. However, the truth about Smokey was quite the opposite. His attitude was incredibly positive. He believed that people are like sponges, absorbing everything around them. Whatever they hear starts to impact them. He also believed that if we are around negative people, we eventually become negative too. Although he was always surrounded by deceased bodies, he made it a point to steer clear of negative people. He believed that to remain positive, we must wisely choose our friends and family members, especially those we spend most of our time with. Confront your fears and grow. Sometimes, when we are close to achieving our dreams, we encounter obstacles that frighten us. Often, these problems may be small, but they seem larger due to our fears. If you want to be successful, you must be prepared to do things that scare you. Fear is a part of the process, and you cannot achieve your dreams without stepping out of your comfort zone. When you want to try something new and feel scared, think carefully about the situation. Try to understand the root of your fear so you can control it. Always remember, if there's something you genuinely want to do but are avoiding it just because of fear, you stand to lose a lot. You might feel relieved for a moment, but your self-respect and growth as a human being will greatly diminish. Do not let your fear dominate. Have the courage to stand up and move forward. Let's hear the story of a woman who knew how to control her fear. Dottie was a high school teacher for 32 years. Her dream was to work in the entertainment field, but she never took action because of her fear. She chose teaching as it seemed a safe profession. Even while teaching, her dream of performing was alive in her heart. She kept writing and singing songs, dreaming of becoming a performer one day. When the summer season began, one day she decided she had to pursue her dream and quit her job. She was determined to make a mark in show business. But then reality struck. She had left her job and was terrified of taking the first step toward her dream. Dottie gave in to her fear and went back to teaching. However, her dream was not dead. She loved music deeply. Six months later, she retired and decided to face her fear of rejection. Despite being in her 50s, she successfully ran her musical show. At the age of 60, she released her first music album. She also performed in bars and clubs in New York City. Dottie felt very proud of her career. She was very happy. Even in her old age, she lived her life fully and happily because she had the courage to turn her dream into reality. Get out there and fail. Earlier, we discussed the importance of challenging ourselves to grow. Sometimes, trying something new can be frightening. But regardless of the outcome, we need to be brave. Yes, we will fail, as most people who have tried before us have, but this does not mean that we should not try or stop moving forward. If there is a dream we truly want to achieve, 
we must attempt it once, twice, even a hundred times, until we succeed. Let's learn about Jack and Mark's story. They co-authored a book and wanted to publish it, aiming to complete the process within three months. They sent the book to a publisher who rejected it. They tried again, but received another no. They faced rejection 33 times in total. Anyone else might have given up, but they persisted. Finally, they sent their book to another publisher who accepted it right away. Their goal was to achieve this in three months but it took them three years. However, this does not change the fact that they persisted until they succeeded. Ultimately, they were successful, and that's what really matters. The book they published became so famous that you can find it in any bookstore. It is part of the popular series Chicken Soup for the Soul. The authors are Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen. If they had not continuously tried and given up halfway, they would never have been successful. Therefore, do not count how many times you fail, and certainly do not consider it as a final result. Remember, rejection does not define our future, but our attitude certainly does. Conclusion now that you have learned about the importance of a positive attitude, it's time to apply this knowledge in your life. In part one, you understood the role of your mind. Once you set your thoughts on positive things, you begin to attract every positive aspect into your life. In part two, you learned how adopting positive language can lead to positive outcomes. Even a simple response to, how are you, can make or break your day. Part 3 taught you how you can be positive and get things done. You learned the importance of choosing the right people to be around. By now, you understand how significantly our company affects us. You also realized that stepping out of your comfort zone is essential for growth and becoming stronger. This book is filled with magical keys that will open every door in your path and lead you to the door of success. And this isn't rocket science. You just have to believe in the magic of attitude. You need to take control of your mind, words, and actions. If your dream is to achieve something that no one has ever accomplished before, the first step is to work on your attitude. Don't wait. Don't doubt. Start working on a positive attitude that will lead you to a life filled with positivity and satisfaction. Here's a test to check your attitude. Imagine a glass of water on a table, half filled. Do you see it as half full or half empty? Some people will say it's half full, others half empty. Neither is wrong. It's all about the attitude of perception. Think honestly about what thought came to your mind. That's your attitude, and working on it is your choice. And there you have it. We've just journeyed through Jeff Keller's Attitude is Everything, uncovering how a shift in our perspective can dramatically alter our path to success. Remember, the power to change your life lies within your thoughts and the words you choose to express them. If you found today's summary enlightening and feel inspired to take control of your attitude, don't keep it to yourself. Share this audiobook summary with friends, family, or anyone you believe could benefit from these powerful insights. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more transformative content like this. We have plenty more life-changing summaries coming your way. Got thoughts or a story about how a positive attitude impacted your life? Drop us a comment below. We'd love to hear how you're turning your thoughts into action and success. Thank you for spending part of your day with us here at Audiobook 101. Until next time, keep that attitude positive and watch as the world changes around you. Remember, every big achievement starts with the decision to try. Make your attitude 
the key to your success.